everyone, it's Emily. I'm filming a little bit of an intro for this video because I'm doing the video slightly differently than I normally do. Um, normally I sit here and I show you all my projects, however this time around I decided to kind of film little clips as I was working on all of my projects so that way my filming time on the weekend was less. So, um, so far I liked the process, we'll see how I feel about it after I've fully edited everything. Um, and so yeah, what I'm going to do in this next video is I'm going to show you the stitching that I did. And I said at the end of that clip that I was going to tell you whatever I did next. Um, I haven't done anything since then. I've been um, very sidetracked by knitting after that round of, I had like a round of stitching and then a round of knitting. So um, yeah, you'll, so the upshot is I tell you at the end that I'll show you what I do next and there's been no update there. Um, I'm also going to tell you about my knitting and crochet, kind of my yarny crafts that I've been doing. And then finally I'm going to tell you a little bit about a non-stitching, non-yarny craft that I've been doing. It's my um, weaving with paper tubes. I'm going to show you the progress I've made on that because I've made quite a, well, I've finished something that's been sitting around waiting to be finished forever. So that was good. Um, and then I will have in the description bar below links to all of the like patterns and any tutorials or whatever that I've got. Um, so you can find that there. There'll also be little links to jump around to different timestamps in the video in case you're not interested in one part but you are interested in another part. You can just jump straight to it. So I hope you enjoy the video. Alright, so I'm finally feeling the urge to stitch again, so I figured I would get out my four heavenly beasts, because that's what I want to work on currently, and I figured I would give you a look at where it was before I got started working on it. Um, and I'm thinking in my last video I said that I hadn't done much progress, if any, on this, but I think that that may be a lie. You may not have seen this um, section of the 20 stitch column until now, but it's just some sky above Tiger's shoulder, and right now I'm getting really into Tiger herself. Um, so yeah, not a lot to say. Oh, I'm thinking, I did a video on how I like to park, because I like to park in 20 stitch rows. But I'm thinking that this time I may actually do um, cross country down the column. And when I do that, what I do is I take the top leftmost stitch and I work that color down this 20 stitch wide column with staggered edges until I run out of that thread and then I go up to the you know next one and I do that and I work my way down. Um, I find that that is faster than doing the parking in rows but I also find it more stressful because I have to pay a lot more attention to make sure that I don't make a mistake and that I don't have to like backtrack up you know go down here and then backtrack up to here and then go down here which is you know not an efficient method. So um, like I said, I, I prefer the parking in rows because I find that the fewest mistakes and the least stressful, but at the same time, um, sometimes I'm in the mood to go fast, and when I do that, I tend to just um, cross country down the column. So I think that's what I may be doing. We will see probably next time you see it. There'll either be obvious signs of cross country or there'll be obvious signs of parking. <laughs> oh, and let me show you what I have on my computer here. Okay, hopefully my camera can just handle looking at my computer screen and I don't have to um, take a screenshot and add it into the video. So, um, my computer is not actually crooked, the cameras and it are just kind of slightly misaligned. Anyway, so being a data e person, I decided to make myself a little Excel spreadsheet that would calculate for me a couple of things. So I have graphed here for the Four Heavenly Beats pattern, obviously. Um, by date, um, what percent, so out of a hundred, I have finished, and what percent I, of the colors that I've used. So I've used about 60% of the colors, and I'm only eh, less than 10% done. Uh, it's actually exactly 6.58% done, which is not a lot. The other thing that I find is kind of fun to look at is um, my projected finish date based on how long it's taken me to make as much progress as I have compared to how much progress I still have to make. So it's currently saying that my projected finish is going to be um, right at the beginning of 2044. <laughs> However, 
However, usually every day that I work on it, I can knock a year or two off that projected finish date. So we will see. Um, I don't actually believe it, but it's a lot of fun to look at, and it's motivating to be like, okay, if I don't want to finish in 2044, I should probably get going on this. So speaking of, I'm going to go get going on this, and I will show you my progress later. All right, check it out. I finished this last bit. Uh, I want to say it was about that big of the second page of Four Heavenly Beasts. So I'm now done with two pages, um, two large print graph pages. Um, and it only took me about four days to do that, which is pretty good because I think usually it would take me about seven or eight days. So going cross country down the column is definitely faster. And the more I did it, the better I got at being able to see the difference between the unstitched stitches on the um, antique white Ada and then the stitched white and cream and other light colors stitches. So I'm thinking when I go on to the next page I may do similar but just do a 10 stitch column because when I'm doing cross country I find it's easier to work with a very small horizontal distance and then go you know vertically down. Anyway, I got that done. I am done with stitching for the day, and I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to move on to the next page of this, or if I'm going to put this away and pull out a different project. So I will show you that when I make that decision. Right, so as you can see, I'm still at the 60% of the colors used, that's the top line, that I was last time. But then along the bottom line, I've gone up from, oh, I don't remember exactly where I was, 6.5-ish maybe is percent of the chart done, and now I'm at 7.34% of the entire pattern done, which is not a lot, but we're inching up on 10%. And my um, projected finish date has gone down. It was in 2044 last time. It's now in 2041. And obviously, the more I work on it, the more that goes down. So, like I said, I don't take it terribly seriously, but it's kind of fun. So. That is my progress on Four Heavenly Beasts, and I will let you know as soon as I know whether I'm going to keep going on it or switch out to something else. Alright, so you may remember this cowl that I had finished up and shown you last time. Um, and if you weren't here last time, you won't. Oh hey, that is a much better color than, much more accurate color than it was in my previous video. So anyway, I did this cowl, and I did this cowl largely to use up these two yarns which are clearly not used up, and I want to use them a bit more before I put them in my um, metered square scrap blanket, just because this is going to make way too many squares and too much of these colors. So, um, now granted this is actually not, it's, it's, I was using it from the inside, so it's a lot smaller than it looks. This one, I think I was also using this one from the inside, it feels pretty empty inside. So anyway, it's almost 200 yards left of this, and just over 100 yards left of this. And so, rather than going back to my regular knitting projects, I really want to use these down to the point that I can put them in my scrap blanket. So, I figured I would show you what I have now, and as you can see, this has a crochet hook in it, and this has knitting needles in it, which should tell you something about the crafts I'm going to do. So my plan, and we'll see how well we stick to it, but my plan is to take this black three-ply regia that I've got, and make this, um string market bag type doohickey out of it, crochet that. Normally market bags are done with cotton because cotton is not as stretchy as wool and so this is um, a wool nylon blend. So I'm going to make sure not to make the handles too long and not make the bag too long and we're going to see how it goes and we'll see and if it ends up not working out then I will know in the future not to do um, market bags out of wool, so we will see. This one will also be interesting because this is a slightly lighter yarn, it's more of a light fingering when the pattern calls for a fingering, I believe. And I thought I had the crochet hook size that it called for, but it turns out I'm about two sizes up, which is, I mean, it's only about half a millimeter off, 
yeah, I think the pattern calls for a 3 millimeter, and this is a 3.5 millimeter. So, we'll see. I tend to crochet kind of tight, so. Hopefully it'll work, and if not, then uh, the uh, I have about a um, half a centimeter down in the other direction in a steel hook, so. We will see how that works. Now, this sucker is the Deborah Norville Serenity Sock in, I want to say, navy. And with this one, I'm looking into knitting a set of fingerless gloves. Um, it's kind of a herringbone pattern. You can't really see it in the printout because the yarn is fuzzy and my printer is not great. So, anyway, I'm going to mess around with that one. It should be... Should be... Um, small enough that I can finish it with this. We will see. So, yeah, I'm going to probably start crocheting the bag. But I just kind of wanted to let you see how much I had left before I got started and see what ends up happening. Okay, so I have one more um, yarn project that I started after the previous two. And there is a reason I'm filming at this weird angle, which you will see shortly. But these are the Jaywalker socks by, uh, I believe it, Grumperina. Um, and this picture is not a great um, yarn to really show off the pattern. You can kind of see that there's this zigzag up and down, whereas if you do it with a self-striping yarn like this, which is Knit Picks Felici in the Glacier colorway, you can start to see that there's this pretty strong um, chevron-y type pattern. So like I said, Knit Picks Felici Glacier colorway, I'm knitting on size twos. All's going well, there's just one little problem. And I'm going to put this sucker on. Oh, obviously I'm doing them two up, two at a time. Two at a time, cuff down on um, Magic Loop, as I'm sure you can tell. So I put this sucker on. Not too bad. Yeah. You want a little bit of gap, but you don't want that much of a gap in your hand knit socks. Um, especially in this pattern, because it, um, because of the way the fabric is constructed, it has less stretch, and it has less, um, spring back. So if it gets stretched out like this, it's not going to come back as tightly as it would if it were, um, a different pattern, basically. So, the size that I calculated per what I know my gauge typically is with this yarn, compared with the gauge that the designer wanted, um... The size that I picked to, to knit is too large. So I'm going to have to rip all of this out, which is unfortunate. Um, but I was thinking as I was doing it that I wish that I had done the cuffs with fewer stitches. So I'm going to do the cuffs with my normal number of stitches and then increase to the number of stitches for the size smaller than this for the leg pattern. So, oh, and as you can see, they do actually match perfectly with the stripes when I, um, the Felici comes in, in skeins where you don't have to rewind them, but I like to rewind them partly so I can see if there's any knots or color issues, uh, which there weren't fortunately, and partly so I can make sure that the stripes are going in the same direction. And with this one, it had about one stripe, um, earlier. So it was one stripe earlier in the color sequence. So instead of um, one of the balls started with this pale blue, and one of the balls started with this green, and then the pale blue. So I took out the greeny section, and I just kept it separately, so that way if I need to add it in at the end, I can do that. But they start at the exact same spot, despite the um, yarn when I purchased it not being in quite the same part of the colors, because obviously they aren't going to be exactly identical with this type of yarn, just the way they're wound up. I tend to do my knitting off and on throughout the day, so unlike with the cross stitching, there wasn't a good way to show you kind of each day's progress. Plus, sometimes I only do a row or two and that doesn't look like very much. So, I figured I would do one kind of collective update on the three projects I've worked on and show you how far I've gotten. So, the first project, I had shown you my Jaywalker Socks by Grumperina. And when I last showed them to you, I had started and they were coming out too big. So I had to rip back and completely restart. And now I've knit 
um, as much yarn as I had done. So I, rip, I knit all the yarn that I ripped out, and I've actually gone further because I'm using fewer stitches around. So I think before it was about that tall, um, and now it's a little bit taller for the same amount of yarn. So as you can see, the little chevron pattern is getting started. These are done cuff down, so this is the cuff and this is the leg. And when I've tried these on, um, it's a much, much better fit. It fits over my foot nicely. It's a little bit loose around the ankle, but if I pull it up to where it's going to sit on my calf, it's quite a good fit. So I'm going to see as I go down whether I want to try to tighten it around the ankle or not. My concern with doing that is it'll make it too tight to go over my heel. So, Also, as an aside, I have no idea why people keep saying toe-up socks are better because you can try them on as you go. You can totally try on cuff-down socks as you go. You just pull them on. I mean, obviously, this is not on a sock on my leg, but, you know, you just pull them on. And it helps, of course, if they're on um, Magic Loop rather than DPNs, because if they're on DPNs, that's going to be the four straight um, DPNs. But that's a problem if you have toe-up socks if they're on DPNs. So I don't, I don't understand why people say that, but people say that all the time. <laughs> And, oh, I should tell you, this is also Knit Picks Felici in the Glacier colorway, and I'm knitting this on size 2 um, Chowgu needles. I want to say that they're a 40-inch circular. I don't remember exactly what size I bought, though. I know that some people don't like the Chowgu cords for knitting um, Magic Loop because they're a little, bit, a little bit stiff. They don't completely, you know, fold flat. They kind of hold their shape. But um, I like them just fine. I've not had any trouble. I've not had any issues with um, laddering as I go up the sides. And it's really interesting because this is not the first pair I've knit two at a time. And the first time I knit stuff two at a time, I was like, I don't really like this. Um, it's taking more time. I'd rather just be on DPNs. Whereas this time around, um, it's going really quickly. I really like it. I don't know. It may just be that I'm more used to it, and I'm more used to how to handle my tension at the um, edges so that I don't get ladders, but it's also not a pain in the butt to scoop the needles around. Also, in case you don't know, I've been saying DPN, so that's a double-pointed needles. So, um, where is one? I know I have one. I have one right here. So these suckers. Um, and you can use three or four. Well, you can use four or five of them to knit um, in the round. Or more if you feel like it. So yeah, I have made it to where I was before, and I'm going onward, and I'm I'm knitting these for the... Oh, what do you call them? It's a Ravelry group called Sock Knitters Anonymous, and they have a sock down challenge, which is a challenge to do a pattern that you've never knit before that's somewhat complicated. And so this is the July challenge for manipulating stuff, striping yarn. So, you know, normally the stripes would just be straight the way you could see them in the cuff, but they're being manipulated to be zigzaggy. Um, and so my goal is to get this done, I believe by the end of August is the deadline. I think you start it sometime in July and you finish it... Um, by the end of August. So, anyway, I'm gonna. That's kind of been my focus, primarily because I'm doing it for that, and I'm looking forward to continuing to work on those. And then another thing that I had shown you that I was doing was this. Let's see, this apricot string bag. It's a crocheted like market bag type bag. And I'm doing this one out of my leftover regia from that cowl. It's a three-ply, so it's a little bit thinner than usual. And um, it's coming along. It's very small, as you can see, like, but it stretches substantially. And that's what I wanted. I wanted a little bag that I could, you know, kind of crumple up and shove in my pocket, but that would stretch out to hold a small round of, you know, farmer's market groceries or something. So I'm quite pleased with that. The only complaint that I have about this pattern, so number, this, this pattern comes from a blog, and on her blog she said you can download this PDF, so that's what I did. I downloaded it and printed it off because I like to mark things off as I go in pencil. And as you can see on this bag, there's these kind of clusters of, um, they're called puff stitches. Well, the instructions for the puff stitches are not in this PDF. It just says, do a puff stitch, which isn't helpful because I need to know how many 
whether I'm doing treble crochets or double crochets, I don't know how many I'm supposed to do, and all this stuff. So, um, of course, I was out there sitting at the bus stop, crocheting along, and discovered that I didn't have the instructions for the puff stitches. So, um, unfortunately, this bag is not going to have what makes this bag unique, namely the puff stitches. Because <laughs> I was just like, yeah, this is not happening, I'm not going to bother looking this up. I'm just going to keep going without it. So, that was unfortunate. On the whole, I'm not too upset, because that those puff stitches would have added bulk, which would have made the whole shove it in the pocket thing harder. But I was still pretty disappointed that the PDF that was supposed to be the PDF of the entire pattern was lacking, and actually I haven't gone and checked whether the blog actually has the puff stitches, because if that isn't there, then that's a problem. Um, so that's, that's unfortunate, but I am making progress. And then the third yarny thing that I've worked on are these, um, I guess, Karna mitts um, by Paulina Herm. Um, Hermie? I don't know. I'm not quite sure. I believe that she is from one of the northern European nitty countries, and I'm not quite sure how you pronounce the thing from there. Um, so anyway, I'm doing this with the leftover um, Deborah Norville Serenity sock that I also had left over from that cowl. This color is navy, although it's just charcoal gray. I don't know why they call it navy. And as you can see with this, oh, and this is knitting with DPNs, double pointed needles, for those of you that are curious. And I cast on and I got started a little bit and then I haven't touched it since. <laughs> I think I've done one day's worth of work on this because I started the socks, and that was far more exciting. Actually, I think, I think I got sidetracked by the cross stitch, and then I started the socks, and then, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that is what I have gotten done on that one, and I'm looking forward to getting back to this. I'll probably get back to this after I finish the bag, just because I'm trying to keep working on those socks for the challenge. Okay, we're going to see if this video is good enough quality to even include. Don't mind any background noise, I'm running the dishwasher. So, I figured I would show you a little bit of me working on this basket, because I've told you before about it, and people have seemed really interested in it, but I've not really talked about, I mean, I've not really shown how I do it, I've talked about it, and the first time I think I linked back to some videos that I learned from. So anyway, this basket is literally made out of tubes of the ads that my local grocery stores send me. I roll them up into little tubes and I paint them black. And I'm running out of black tubes. I'm going to have to paint some of these pretty soon. I'm not done with my basket. We shall see. So anyway, basically the way it works is I have my little, my uprights that I'm weaving around and then I have two pieces that I'm weaving with. And I'm going to attach these are too short, I need to attach new sticks onto them. And pretty much what happens is you slide the new one into the old one or over the old one, depending on which is larger. And a little bit of white glue. Whoa! I hope this is the end I was using before. I always check fit before I add the glue because the glue obviously softens the paper. So if the fit isn't good and I have to get out a new one, it's a lot more of a pain to do if you've already got softened paper than if you've got, you know, your unglued paper. Okay, so this could go. Yeah, I'm thinking this is going to be a narrow end, so I'm going to put the new one around it. So I'll put a little glue on the inside of the new tube. And when I put it on, I kind of rotate it, which one helps it go down and two spreads that glue around. And then ideally you would let these dry and all that, but I don't do that. <laughs> uh, okay, let me look really quickly. Okay, so I always put the exterior one over the interior one. So if you can see, cannot see. You might be able to see. This one's coming from the inside of this upright and this one's on the outside of the upright. 
So I'm going to put this one that's on the outside behind this next upright. I'm going to give it a little bend because I find it keep, it's easier to keep them physically on the outside of the basket. And then I'm just going to keep on doing it. And with these, I find that what helps is I kind of, I always make sure that my uprights are staying upright and they're not like angling out or angling in. And I make sure that my corners are nice and 90 degrees. And then just, yeah, you may not be able to see this. It's a little hard for me to see the screen to see if you could see the screen, what's happening on the screen. Okay. So that can be most of the way down this side. And then I'm just going to move my little clothespin over to here to hold it and attach new. Yeah, that'll go over this one. There's some natural variation depending on how big the piece of paper I used was and how thick the paper is and how tightly I rolled it and all this stuff and whether it loosened when it was painted. It shouldn't, but occasionally it does. This one, the ends are all wacky on, so I'm going to make my life easier and trim off a little bit of the ends so that I don't have to fight with, like, weirdly squishy ends. <coughs> okay. That will fit there. Apply a little glue. around this corner. When I turn the corners, I always um, push on the inside and then turn the, the outer one around. And the nice thing about these is it's just paper, so it's quite easy to manipulate. Although, like I said, I have to make sure that it's not um, going out of alignment, because that happens quite easily as well. This is the spot where I glued two of them together, and since the glue's not fully dry, it was kind of separating, so I just shoved it back into place, and my corner is still nice and square and all that jazz. So, so after the last time I showed you this, I did indeed finish weaving the sides, and those upright um, posts that were coming out here ended up folded over and then tucked down inside the woven sections. So that's how I finished them off. And then I also gave it a coat of dilute white glue and water, which, um, you know, before I was saying I could kind of like push it around and, and form it, but now it's stiffened up a lot. Like it will not move because that glue soaked in and one, it stiffened the paper tubes and two, it glued each of these sections where they touch. So right now what I'm going to do is starting at the bottom, I'm going to coat it with, it's a, it's just um, polyacrylic, like it's wood furniture varnish, and that I diluted by 50% with water. Um, and diluting it just makes it um, easier to spread and makes it soak in more. So it's definitely off-label use, but I find that it works. So I'm going to give it a coat, and I'm going to be more patient than I usually am, I think, and do just the bottom and one side at a time, so that way the bottom can thoroughly dry before I flip it over. You can see there's kind of some spots where the glue um, that was on my little, uh, this is just a garbage bag that I've sacrificed to the crafting gods, and um, oh, where was I going with that? It will um, not have these little weird bumpy bits that sometimes happen if I'm not um, patient and don't give it time to dry before it touches the plastic. So, I'm going to do this bottom bit, trying to minimize the bubbles. I found that bubbles in the glue layer will completely um, kind of dissipate as they dry, but bubbles in the um, varnish layer tend to stay put. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I am going to kind of um, 
dribble just a little bit down the uprights from the bottom because I'm trying to get it to soak in and harden all of that. And then of course if any little drops come out I will neaten them up. Also, this way I can get the undersides of the um, tubes that became the sides. So yeah, now that that has been done, I'm going to let that sit for a couple of hours and then start to do the outsides, but not flip it fully over to do the inside until tomorrow. Um, and then once that is done, this whole basket will be done. So you may not see it again because it's not going to look significantly different once it's been fully varnished. So that was everything I've done. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you feel about this new format. Um, and leave any comments or questions you have in the in the. I was going to say in the description box, but you can't edit the description box. Leave them in the comment section. I'll be happy to get back to you, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye!